Well, hello there. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to our newly renovated RV. If you've been following our Ultimate RV Makeover series this last eight weeks, you would have seen the transformation of our 1999 Country Coach into the Ultimate Glamping Machine, home and office on wheels that she is now. So we've been getting quite a few questions, so in this video we're going to give a quick walkthrough with the coach and answer some of the questions we've been seeing. So stay tuned. Welcome back everyone. So hopefully you've seen our series and especially the final reveal of our new motorhome. Mm -hmm. But we've been getting a lot of questions on how it's working for us, how it's mm -hmm. what it's like to live in it. Sure, it looks pretty, but is it livable? So a lot of people have asked how has Cece held up uh, while we've been traveling in her. It's one thing to be parked in a stationary location and it's another to put it in drive, head down the road. And we've driven quite a few thousand miles since you saw the final reveal episode. And that's actually a few months ago. There is such a thing as content lag. <laughs> Especially with this series. <laughs> and this is it. So we're going to take you on a walkthrough today and we're going to talk to some of the things uh, to share with you and answer your questions as we go. So let's get started. Yeah. Do you want to start over here in your little office section in the front of the driver's area? Sure. So up here in the front office space, this has actually worked out super well. The ergonomics are good. It's been comfy. I've spent a lot of hours here. Uh, the curtains, someone was asking about what we did with these. All we had to do with these is put them in the washing machine and then rehang them and they ended up having their pleats back, just hanging them back up. So that's been super easy. So as you can see here, this is our main office workspace area. And as mentioned in episode two, and I think also in episode six, I'm trying to remember now, of the makeover series, we talked about how this works for us and that we share these workspaces. We're gonna be doing a separate dedicated video on our workspaces and everything we use for our RV office. But as you can see here, this is working pretty well. We've got a little cable organizer at the back here to keep a little tidy. One big question we have been getting about this is how we keep this affixed. And Mark did put some screws in on the back of the wall here because it is real wood. And uh, this is really solid now. So in relation to the chair, which is on wheels, as you can see, we do actually lock this in place for when we're driving. Now, our next video is going to be our post makeover where we show you what we do to pack the coach down to make it uh, travel ready. But just to give you you a little quick heads up now because I know you're wondering we've created a system with a strap and some bungee cords and a hook that actually comes around here keeps the drawers in place keeps the chair in place and hooks around here so don't want to bog this video down with that detail but we will be covering that in a future video but this does not budge at all when we're traveling let me show you this this is something that we put in but we didn't actually show you in the previous video we put little LED strip lights underneath this cabinet and uh, I don't know if you can see it there, it's daytime, a little bit hard to see, but that's really nice. Touch the one under the kitchen too. Oh yeah, so here we put one under the kitchen cabinet as well. And I think it kind of wigs out with the camera with the LED lights or something, so we don't like to leave that on while we're filming videos, but it's really nice, especially at night. I think we'll do a nighttime video so you can see what it looks like in the evening in here. This is the same as it was under here, big, big storage drawer, which we love fits a ton of stuff in here to show you what this is. We have a printer down here and uh, some nice organizing totes here from Ikea. But this works out great. We love all that storage and this folds out into a jackknife sofa bed. And this is just a little table that uh, is really nice to just put on a book or your cup of tea or something like that. So you'll see in our next video, in our pack down video, the other use that we have for this on travel days. It's pretty nifty. So a couple of other people were very attentive in watching the videos and noticed a couple of things here about the booth dinette. One is that this table, this marble table, hangs over the edge of the slide here by a good, I'd say, couple of inches. Uh, there's a reason for that. This is a pretty small space and so we were trying to make the most of it have the right depth of seating and it really doesn't bother us at all that it's hanging over but this is such a heavy table. This does not move at all when we're driving but just as a safety precaution I had Mark do a cutout in this booth seat so in the unlikely event that this 
heavy table may tip. It's just gonna hit the top of that lip and then come back down again. We love that we can move this all around the RV. We often take it up to the front area when we're entertaining guests. A couple of other things you might notice here. One is this seat actually does hang off the edge of the slide by about six inches. And that was just to give us more space in the seating area. It is solidly screwed in here. It is not going anywhere. You can even sit on the end and it's not a problem at all. Uh, we don't usually sit right in the end. Usually we're seating here and here. We were just maximizing the use of this small space on the slide for our dining area. These uh, cushions are not actually upholstered yet. This is one of the things that we have had trouble getting done since we, since we finished our remodel is this is just foam that's been cut to size and we've just got fabric over it right now. We've had trouble finding an upholsterer that can do this, especially as well, it's just hard to find upholsterers these days. It's a bit of a dying art, but also we're traveling and we're on the move, so we're not in an area long enough to be able to get them done. So that's a really, that's probably one of the biggest outstanding jobs that we've still got happening right now that we need to get onto once we slow down enough to be in one spot and get it done. So if you're wondering why I haven't done it myself, two reasons. One, I haven't had the time. Two, I don't have my sewing machine with me. It's actually at my mother-in-law's in Colorado. So next time we shoot through Colorado, I'll need to pick up my sewing machine and probably just have a go at doing this myself if I don't just find someone else that can make them for me in the meantime. <laughs> Otherwise we're loving this area and how it works. We love the L-shaped dining and there's loads of storage under here. So we can keep things under here like uh, you know I've got vacuum and extra stuff from Costco. <laughs> It's really great for storage. So a big question we've been getting, which wasn't a surprise, because this was my first question when uh, we first decided to introduce chandeliers into the RV, was how we're going to secure them on travel days. Again, we're going to be sharing all of this in detail in the next video, but we just unhook this from this little hook we've got up the top, and then we sit it on a pile of cushions that sit here in the dinette. And that is surprisingly simple and it has been working surprisingly well. Before I talk about the kitchen, I also wanted to talk about this fireplace. It's something we haven't had a chance to talk about in any of the other videos. Julie spent a lot of time trying to find the perfect fireplace for this wall. It's hard to find one that's a vertical application. But this is really great fireplace because it has the ability to change all the accent colors and it also has the ability to heat the coach. So we have a lot of functionality out of this fireplace. As far as the kitchen, this countertop extension here is something people thought might be a real challenge with travel, that it would swing and bang, but we have a really quick and easy solution for that, and that I just put a pool noodle on the back side of that, and that protects both the side of the counter and prevents it from banging around. Uh, so this first drive, it definitely did bang around. We've had a few questions about how this tile backsplash is held up. The tile itself has been great and the grout for the most part is great, but where the tile meets the countertop, we did see some cracking in the grout along the, where the countertop and the wall meet. That was very easily fixed just using some white caulk where the wall and the counter meet. The fridge has held in place really well with the new cabinet we built around it. And then as far as transporting it so the doors don't open, we have really simple solutions with Velcro that we use and a locking latch here on the freezer door that we'll show you more in the pack down video. You know, this bright blue bathroom has been a little polarizing. People that really like the remodel um, either love the bathroom or they hate it. It's definitely... Uh, Definitely got two sides of the fence there, but that is totally fine. This was meant to be something bright and happy and a surprise and completely unexpected. So whether you like it or not, it's definitely unexpected. So that's been fun. It took a little while for me to get used to as well, but now I really love it. Shower's been awesome. We love this. One of the things we love about this is not only do we have extra room in the shower, but when we get back from a pool or a hot tub, we just bring our wet swimsuits and our wet towels and put that inside and then we're able to hang them so it drips into the actual shower recess. It's hiding my uh, laundry basket and now I don't have to look at a dirty shower. <laughs> it's all hidden. I love it. We did have a question about how all the white was holding up. You can see we've got very light whites and creams and ivories here in the bedroom and it's been holding up just fine. Uh, same even with the white cabinets and the paint dust actually shows up less on white cabinets than it did in the darker cabinets that we had in our previous motorhome so uh, that hasn't been an issue at all uh, there's a little if you look down here you mightn't have seen this in the final reveal video there's like a little sheepskin type rug at the foot of the bed here uh, 
that is the only thing that we're really noticing gets a little bit dirty at times and we've been able to shake it out and we just put it in a gentle cycle in the washing machine and that has been fine and I have a spare one so that's really the only thing that gets a little dirt uh, if we walk it in but so far not a problem and they're only about 10 bucks each and here's another little bonus what I love about this <laughs> aside from Mark being able to look at the battery status here and what's going on with our power when we're coming into bed at night I just press that button and it's just enough light to light up the bedroom to get into bed without actually having to turn on any light so that's a cool added bonus <laughs> we'll do a separate video about our color control panel here when we share more about what we can do with our lithium batteries because this is that's pretty pretty cool another controversial thing we've seen in the comments is the idea of flipping the cabinets this is the cabinet where we originally had the idea and it was because this smaller, narrower panel feels cluttered with this extra raised panel insert in it. Um, when you have normal, when you have normal cabinets, it doesn't feel as cluttered. Oh, see, it's still got a little loose. Looks like this cupboard has needing a little bit of caulking or glue here to touch that back up. So a lot of that. we did a lot of the cupboards, had to re-glue them and re-put them back together when we took them apart because they're 20 year old cabinets and a lot of the glue had dried out, but most of them have held up really well. One of the bigger parts of flipping these cupboards in my opinion is that because this RV was ordered with a mirror package where all the faces of these cupboards were covered with mirrors, that meant that the cupboard face of them was an unfinished panel. So. The, this does not have a raised panel like most of the cupboards in the motorhome. This is actually really unfinished and I opinion ugly. And so if we weren't going to flip the cabinets, we would have had to replace all these cabinet doors with new cabinet doors. So we were kind of in a pickle. We had to do a lot of work regardless of the approach we took. And we're really happy with this more clean lined look of these flip cabinets and the exposed hinges. We think that looks really nice. So another question we had was of course about the bedroom chandeliers and trust me, that was a question I had too when Jane wanted to bring these in because my practical mind was saying, well, how are we gonna secure them on travel days? We have found a nifty way to do that, which again, it's coming up in our pack down video next week. But just to give you a quick uh, heads up, we have little bungee cords that we secure with a little hook at the back of the cupboard there. This used to have cupboard doors on it with mirrors and we removed them and so that stays in place. So these actually stay really, really solid on drive days and you'll get to see that in next week's video. So we wanna say thank you all for watching the Ultimate RV Makeover series, all eight episodes. It was a lot of fun to create. It was a lot of work to create. I think Editing the videos was as much work as doing the actual remodel. But all of your feedback and comments all the way through was absolutely fantastic really kept us going the vast majority of you seem to really like what we've done here so thank you we're glad you love it uh, we love it and but there are definitely some things that some of you either didn't really understand why we did it and maybe weren't even a fan of it because it's not your taste and that is totally fine just as long as it gets those wheels turning and thinking about different creative ideas of what you can do and just push the envelope a bit so that as Jane said you know it's not so RV anything. so the million dollar question of course is how much did it all cost keep in mind a lot of this expense we were buying all new appliances like new residential refrigerator new convection oven and custom stainless steel custom cases pieces, made. yeah new lighting new flooring new paint there was a lot that went into this it's around about twelve thousand dollars and when you think about what we actually pulled off in that i think i think we did pretty well i mean it would yeah, cost we a lot well. more if you had to pay someone else to do the labor <laughs> it could get expensive if you're paying for labor right it was a diy job mm -hmm. so me and the rest of the team did a great job doing all of this ourselves we did hire out the tile work mm -hmm. um, but that was pretty minimal expense that was 250 only, bucks yeah 250 bucks so our off-grid power system up upgrade with our six Battleborn lithium batteries, our solar panels, the inverters, solar controllers, and all the wiring to everything to connect to that. That is worth around $13,000. That does not include the cost of installation. We were lucky enough to have a no. team uh, of fellow RVers help us install that a few months before we actually did the remodel. It was thanks to our partnership with Battleborn Lithium Batteries that we were able to power this entire renovation off-grid. Uh, do the whole thing with our lithium batteries, our solar panels, 
using a macerator to dump our tank. So we did have water hooked up, but if you didn't catch that episode, be sure to go and check out episode number five on how we powered this entire RV renovation off grid in under a month. So, so it seems like everyone's been loving Makeover Mondays and a lot of you are wanting more detail on some specifics on some how-tos on what we did on this RV renovation. There is a lot more in terms of mods and upgrades we're making to this RV. So we're going to continue sharing them here on Mondays, but that's not all. That's what we're really excited about now that we're back out on the road and traveling and exploring and to share more of those kinds of videos with you as well so let us know what kinds of videos you want to see from us guys you want to see me doing some cooking videos in that gorgeous kitchen you want to see some more driving videos how we live this life how we work from the road let us know down in the comments below hope you've enjoyed this so far thanks again so much for all of your awesome comments and feedback and likes and shares on the RV makeover series if you haven't caught all eight episodes we're going to put a link down below go and check out the whole series because there's much more to it than just the final reveal and I think that's about it that's about it so we're going to get back to our day hope you're having a great week and we'll catch you next time